Hello and welcome to the Freehold Regional High School District Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us at today's event. We're really excited. We have a great group of panelists and institutions here to tell you all about their schools and programs. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You may use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You don't need to wait until a certain institution is presenting to ask those questions. You can ask questions to any of our attendee or panelists at any time throughout the event today. Your camera and your microphone are off so panelists cannot see or hear you today. And this is one of many different sessions happening. We've got a couple more happening tonight after this uh, and then another night tomorrow. So make sure you take a look and sign up for extra sessions. Finally, this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com forward slash FRHSD. I'll put that link in the chat as well. But now I'm going to turn it over to our main event and that is hearing from our wonderful panelists. We're gonna get started today with SUNY New Pulse, whenever you're ready. All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Abigail. I'm a freshman admission advisor here at SUNY New Paltz. Uh, and SUNY just stands for State University of New York. And we're located in New Paltz, New York. Uh, and we are so proud of our location. And we really think that it sets us apart from other uh, state school, state New York schools. Uh, and so we are so proud of our location. We are about an hour and a half north of New York City, an hour and 20 minutes south of the capital of Albany. We are also about 20 to 25 minutes away from some larger cities, uh, so Kingston, Poughkeepsie, and Newburgh. Uh, and we're also about 15 minutes away from the beautiful Shawangook Mountains. So this gives our students so many opportunities uh, for academics, uh, internship opportunities, and just fun things to do in the area as well. Uh, I also want to mention that we are about two hours and 15 minutes uh, from Freehold, New Jersey. So uh, we are close, but not too, too close, which is pretty nice. Uh, but for our academic opportunities in our area, our students will uh, go up to those mountains, like I mentioned earlier, and do some research projects, find some inspiration for uh, their art projects, their art assignments. Uh, our students will also take advantage of our uh, our location for their internship opportunities. So. Uh, We've had students intern locally at the New Paltz Youth Center. Uh, they've gone to intern at the Ulster County Comptroller's Office. They've also gone across the rivers, just 25 minutes away to intern at IBM. Uh, and our students have gone up to Albany to participate in the New York State Legislative Internship Program and have gone to New York City to intern at some big names like NBC, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, uh, Prada, they've interned on Wall Street. So because our location is so centralized, we are located smack dab in the middle of the Hudson Valley. We are so proud of everything that we have to offer our students. But in addition to our location, we have over 100 majors and 50 minors at New Paltz. So we have a school of business, a school of education, school of fine and performing arts, uh, a school of science and engineering, and our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. So there's so much for our students to really pick from, and we encourage students to get a degree in what they're interested in. So kind of maybe get that mixed match degree, major in theater arts, minor in math, or whatever it might be. Uh, we're also about a medium to small school, so we have about 6,800 undergraduate students. Our student to faculty ratio is 15 to 1, so you really get to know your professors, they get to know you. Most of our class sizes are going to be less than 30 students per class. And I do want to also talk about some admissions requirements. Uh, so when we are uh, looking at your application, we require either the common application or the SUNY application. We do not have a preference, so whichever one you feel most comfortable filling out is perfectly fine for us. After we're looking at your uh, application, we'll be looking at your high school transcript. When we're looking at the high school transcript, we are looking at the five main subject areas. So we're looking to see that you have completed uh, four years of English, four years of social studies, three to four years of a science with a lab, the lab component is required, uh, two to four years of a language other than English, and three to four years of math. The math 
um, we have a hard set requirement uh, of Algebra 2. So the math must include Algebra 2 trigonometry for admission to SUNY New Paltz. Uh, so please keep that in mind uh, and, and talk to your guidance counselor about that math course. Uh, if you haven't taken it in your junior year, maybe sign up for it in your senior year. When we're looking at your high school transcript, the average of our accepted students have a 3.5 GPA or higher. Um, that's not a set number, it's just the average of what our accepted students have. So we take a little bit lower than that 3.5, and of course we take higher than that 3.5 as well. Uh, we will look to see if you have taken any upper level courses, AP, IB, or college level courses as well when we are looking at your transcript. Uh, after we're looking at your transcript, we'll be looking to see if you have sent in any letters of recommendation. We require at least one letter of recommendation from a teacher or a guidance counselor, but we will accept up to three letters. After we're looking at your letters of recommendation, we'll be reading your personal essay. Now your personal essay is your time to shine. It's your time to tell us who you are as a person, as a student. Uh, and so please, you can write about anything you'd like, but please make sure you are having that essay proofread. We will be looking at spelling, grammar, and punctuation. As of right now, we're not sure if we'll be requiring SAT or ACT test scores for fall of 2022. And uh, that's a big question right now. However, we are waiting to hear from SUNY administration to make that decision. Uh, we, I also want to talk about uh, the opportunities we have at SUNY New Paltz. We have over 200 clubs and organizations for our students to get involved in, clubs for our majors, clubs for our sports. Uh, we have uh, D3 sports. We also have intramural sports as well as club sports. And we also have just clubs for fun things to do outside of the classroom. You know, maybe it's um, a dance club or an acapella club. Uh, we have so many opportunities for our students. We also have a lot of virtual events going on, so please feel free to check us out on our website. Uh, we have virtual events where you can meet one-on-one -on -one with an admissions counselor, so myself or my colleagues, if you have any questions, uh, as well as um, checking out our virtual tour too. So we have so many options and I will make sure to put my uh, email address as well as the um, web page for SUNY New Paltz in the chat for you today. Uh, so you will be able to check us out a little bit more. And if you have any questions, please feel free to send me uh, an email. And thank you so much for your time today. Fantastic. Well, what a wonderful way to get us started on today's event. Thank you so much, SUNY New Paltz. We are going to turn now to City University of New York whenever you're ready. Here we go. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Eddie DeLeon. I am an admissions counselor at the CUNY Welcome Center. We are the CUNY's uh, Office of Undergraduate Admission. I represent admissions offices for 25 different colleges. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for a moderator and my colleagues. And what a perfect way to start, you know, back to back SUNY and CUNY. SUNY, as you probably know, is the uh, uh, part of the state education system, university system in um, and represent the city university system. So we are going to get started. One second, here we go. And I'm bragging obviously always about the location where I go to work when we have uh, office hours, uh, not too far away from the heart of New York City, 34th Street, the Empire State Building. The City University of New York was established in 1847, back then known as the Freedom Academy or Free Academy. It offered free, excellent education to all. That mission continues today with 25 different colleges that make up part of our university, offering over 1,750 different programs, majors, 20,000 fac 20, faculty members, over 275 degrees seeking students, total student population at, a, at the university is close to a half a million. And of course, 1 million plus alumni worldwide. It's uh, probably very common for you to know somebody or have a family member, especially in New Jersey, who attended, has graduated, or perhaps currently attending one of our schools. A high quality affordable education it continues to be the motto of our school. 1970, I think, CUNY started charging tuition. For out-of-state tuition, uh, for out-of-state residents still 
an excellent uh, education and price under $20,000 for a four-year institution and under $10,000 for a community college. We are proud to say that 65% of our students attend tuition free and three out of four graduate debt free. These are some of the accolades that we have earned over the years. America's best value of college, colleges, best global universities. And we're now very proud of the, the one at the bottom, one of the top 10 community colleges in the nation. I spent 10 years, uh, my first 10 years at CUNY working at Kingsborough Community College. Again, New York City, the capital of the world. And this is a map of the different locations of our 25 institutions. As you can see, at least one CUNY college located in each one of our boroughs. Number six, Staten Island, which is the largest campus in our system, 104 acres. I know that because I graduated from there. It's probably the closest campus to students in New Jersey, maybe a 10 minute drive over the bridge and to Freehold County, about 45 minutes. I make that trek from my home in Brooklyn across Staten Island into New Jersey every fall and spring season. I'm definitely missing being out there. So I'm very happy to be here today. Some um, of the colleges listed here may sound familiar to some of you. Baruch College is known as our School of Business, offering amazing programs in accounting, business degrees, economics, entrepreneurship, nationally known as one of the best public schools, uh, as well as John Jay School of Criminal Justice, located in the Lincoln Center area. Again, well known across the country as probably the best public school offering criminal justice as well as forensic science major. So plenty to choose from at a large institution like the CUNY system. We offer traditional urban campuses right in the hustle and bustle of the city, easy transportation to dorms. Uh, we also offer Three neighborhoods, quads, gymnasiums. You're looking at the uh, library. I, I paused there for a second because I noticed that my uh, internet service was a little bit slow. I was just bragging about the beautiful library at Brooklyn College, Queens College, and our amazing Gothic style architecture up in Lehman College. Offering a minimum of 30 credits. English, math, science, psychology, history. We pride ourselves in offering a classroom of 30 or less students in a very diverse student population. Over 174 languages spoken uh, at our, our system. Again, 1,750 academic majors to choose from with 80% of faculty members who have earned the top degree in their field, more than PhD. Jeez. So how do you choose 17 from 1,750 majors? We have a site, we have a, a search box on our uh, cuny.edu webpage that helps you narrow down your choices. Here's a, a brief uh, example of the offerings. Health profession, very popular at CUNY, as well as public service and technology. Honors programs, Macaulay Honors Program. It's a program, four year school, for high achieving students, not just from New York City, but also from the tri-state area and across the nation. For an in-state uh, student, it's a full ride for out of state uh, residents. All the academic offering resources, which include stipend to travel abroad and do research, as well as a brand new Apple laptop computer. Unfortunately, financial fortune is is not open to out of state students, but you can still be selected as a Macaulay Honors College where you graduate with two degrees, one from the Honors College and one for the campus that you decide to attend. Connections to match your drive. Some of the companies I hire are students and interns and post graduation. Our location is probably one of the best resources that we can provide to our students and graduates. Quickly, our faculty always needs to highlight here are some of the uh, scholarships awards that they have earned over the years and very proud about those 13 Nobel Prize winners. Infinite ways to get involved at CUNY. Clubs, athletics, study abroad, festival service opportunities. We're hoping to get back to them in the fall. And of course, 
campus life at eight of our institutions. Really quickly, currently, uh, CUNY has also suspended the uh, requirement of SAT. We don't have a decision yet for the fall 2022. As a freshman, you can select six colleges from the one that I uh, listed on, on the map to be reviewed uh, from. We have an online application. Currently, we're not on the Common App. You will need to uh, complete an application on our webpage, cuny.edu. You can submit your documents electronically, check your status, and also file for financial aid. Deadlines, February 1st is the deadline for a general admission student applying for the fall semester, December 1st for the Macaulay Honors College. Here's my email and a web page and telephone number for you to reach out to me if you have any further questions. Again, thank you for your time this afternoon. Wonderful. Well, thank you, City University of New York. That was wonderful. Uh, I think that it's hard to imagine just how difficult it is to fit in all of this important information in such a short time. So we thank you all for making a work here. We are going to head now to Marist College whenever you are ready. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Gina Jadelis. I'm one of the admission counselors at Marist. I also uh, grew up in Scotch Plains and I my parents just moved down to Lavalette. So very familiar with uh, freeholds and the school district. So always my favorite time of year um, when I travel down there, uh, make sure I get my rough coffee and everything like that. But I'm so excited to be with you virtually this evening uh, and tell you a little bit about Marist. Uh, so Marist is about two hours away from Freehold, uh, right up the Garden State Parkway. Uh, very easy drive uh, and you are located in Poughkeepsie or we are located in Poughkeepsie right on the Hudson River. This is what it looks like during the fall. Very picturesque, very beautiful. Uh, and I'm excited to share a little bit more with you today. Uh, so some quick facts about Marist is that we have about 5,000 students at the undergraduate level. This means our class sizes are going to be anywhere from 20, uh, at really anywhere from on average 22 students to 18 students. Now we do hold classes up to 35 students, no more than that. We do not have lecture halls on campus. And then in addition, we will hold classes as small as three or four students if it's a class that those students need to graduate. You will see here that we have a 16 to one student faculty ratio. So you're really going to be able to develop those relationships with your professors, connect with them in a variety of different ways and they all hold office hours. So if you need help or have any questions, you can always connect with them before or after class or during their office hours. I'm not going to go through all 40 majors with you this evening, but what I do like to stress is the the fact that we do have flexibility at Marist uh, in terms of your academic programs. So whether you come in as undecided, which is our most popular major, or you change your major, or if you decide to double major, we have a lot of the really amazing programs uh, for you to further your education, whether it's computer science, athletic training, uh, biology, uh, possibly on our pre-med track, uh, business administration, fashion, communications. Again, there's resources and opportunities for all of our students. We are by no means a suitcase school. We are a residential college. 96% of first year students do choose to stay on campus and about 75% of our student body will stay on campus all four years. Uh, so you will notice that during the weekend, students aren't going home. Students are actively engaged in the community. Our students are hold, going to events and they're giving back to the local community in Poughkeepsie. So there's always something to do, whether it's $25 Broadway trip tickets or whether um, obviously, you know, those events aren't happening right now, but I've been noticing more and more students having picnics on our green, uh, doing events like s'mores and bingo outside and socially distant. Uh, so even in these crazy COVID times, there is definitely still ways to connect with, connect with others. Of course, you know, you want to understand and know that your college education uh, is going to have, has an investment portion of it. So 98% of our students are employed or attending graduation within six months of graduating from the college. I attribute the success to the fact that Marist really emphasizes internships, that Marist emphasizes studying abroad, our liberal arts curriculum, which is going to make you a critical thinker and well-rounded, um, and much more. We also have an 83% graduation rate. So we work with our students from their very first semester at the college to ensure that they are going to graduate in a timely manner. Uh, again, we understand that college is an investment and we want it to be the best four years of your life, but we only want it to be four years. 
And, you know, sadly, we can't uh, have you on, well, sadly, we aren't on campus today or meeting you in person, um, but we are open for in-person visits. Uh, but I wanted to show you a little bit of campus, uh, you know, within this presentation. And I normally use this time to really emphasize that you're all embarking on this college search process. And of course, academics and preparing you for the professional workforce um, is so important um, and should be your top priority. But some of the other major lessons that you're going to learn in college are through different opportunities. Maybe it's studying abroad. Maybe it's having an internship. Maybe it is um, being in a leadership position in a club, all of the, all of the above. Uh, and so I like to use this time to tell you a little bit about those extra resources. So Marist is only 90 minutes away from New York City by train, and we have a lot of really amazing connections in Manhattan. Uh, many of my friends would intern two or three days a week in the city uh, and commute in by train. Personally, I used those connections during the summer, uh, and I had a shorter commute because I lived in Jersey. Also, I mentioned studying abroad. We have a campus in Florence, Italy. I, I personally studied abroad. I was able to go to nine different countries and 28 cities over the span of 15 weeks. Uh, and so, you know, that's certainly a highlight that I like to share. In terms of our uh, just partnerships in the local area, we do have a joint study program with IBM. FDR has a presidential library about five minutes up the road. We are one of six colleges or universities that has a partnership with a presidential library. Um, and perhaps one of our greatest assets uh, or resources for our students is the Hudson River uh, that our students are able to do research in. So again, if you're interested in doing research or having those kinds of internships, we do have resources available for you. And so again, it's really going to be the culmination of all of these different aspects, which is really going to shape your college experience uh, and really help you grow personally and professionally. In terms of applying to Marist, we have two different decision deadlines, uh, December 1st and March 1st. And then these are the grades that we are looking for. We have been test optional for the past 10 years. Uh, so this is not a new practice for us. And as I mentioned, we are open for in-person visits we have a lot of virtual programs and even self-guided tours, driving tours around campus if you don't feel comfortable interacting with our tour guides. I just wanna say thank you again for having me today. Um, and if you have any questions, I will put my email in the chat as well. Awesome, well, thank you so much, Marist College. That was wonderful. We are going to, in just a moment, hear from the University of Albany, but I wanted to remind everyone that the Q&A function is open. So please go ahead and use that to submit any of the questions you have for today's panelists. But now it's time to hear from the University of Albany whenever you are ready. Hi everyone, my name is James Curley. I am Senior Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions at University of Albany. Thank you for taking time out of your schedules to come and learn more about uh, University of Albany and the other schools here this evening. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen here. So as I said, um, I am Senior Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions at UAlbany. I oversee our out-of-state recruitment as well. So um, majority of that time is spent down in New Jersey each year, um, going to different high schools and college fairs. And we certainly hope to be back um, doing that this fall. Um, before I forget to uh, mention, um, we are doing in-person visits now. So we hope to uh, have you on campus soon to, to see University of Albany in person. And so University of Albany, we are one of 64 SUNY schools, State Universities of New York, and we are one of the four university centers along with Binghamton, Buffalo, and Stony Brook. Um, and the one thing that really separates us um, is that we are a tier one research institution. Um, we are uh, a school of about 13,000 undergraduate students. And I just checked on my phone, we are two hours and 57 minutes from Freehold, New Jersey. So not too far, we're within that three hour range from home. And I grew up in the Albany area. Um, I went away to college in New York City, but I moved back to Albany for my master's. And um, one of the reasons I did so is because Albany is really a unique town. We're a capital city as well as a big college town. 
Um, so there's 20 colleges and universities in the capital region when college is in session. We have over 65,000 college students here in the area. Um, our location also makes us unique to internships and research being in a capital city. A lot of our students will intern at nearby businesses. Any students looking to go into political science or public policy, we have the third largest seat of government here in Albany. And also we have a great proximity to other major cities, including New York City, Boston, Montreal, all of which are just a few hours from our campus. So I'm not gonna go through all of the majors today, but I just wanted to share them for a minute here. Uh, we have nine different colleges or schools, and you can see the majority of them are made up into our College of Arts and Sciences. Some of the more popular majors here uh, include many of our sciences, so our biology major, chemistry, physics, um, our psychology major is also very popular. Um, our College of Emergency Preparedness, Homeland Security, and Cybersecurity. This is a relatively new program, which has really taken off in the last few years. Um, same as our College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. This started about five years ago on campus and has really taken off. Uh, our Ro Rockefeller College of um, Public Affairs and Policy, as I mentioned, you know, we're in a great location to um, partake in internships for these programs. Our School of Business contains our accounting, business administration, digital forensics, and financial market regulation majors. Uh, our School of Criminal Justice is currently ranked number three in the country. And then finally, our School of Public Health, School of Social Welfare, and School of Education. So we have a great honors college at University of Albany. All students, all applicants are automatically considered for the honors college when they apply. We're looking somewhere for um, about a 95 GPA, uh, mostly you know, A's and B's on your transcripts. So it's a very competitive program. Um, but it comes with a lot of advantages, honors college housing, uh, the academic prestige of being in the program. Honors college students are the first ones to register for their courses for the upcoming semester each semester. Um, so all students are automatically considered for this. And if they are deemed eligible, they receive a notification from the admissions office. Student involvement, there is so much to do on campus at UAlbany. We have over 300 different clubs and organizations ranging from different academic clubs, political clubs, community service oriented clubs, and much more. We also have Division I athletics. You can see a list of all of our men's and women's teams here on the screen, as well as numerous intramural and club sports. The application process. So if you are looking to apply to University of Albany, you can do so one of two ways. You can apply on the Common application or the SUNY application, which allows for you to apply to up to five different SUNY schools at once. Our accepted student mid-range GPA, so where the median 50% of students, admitted students fall, is about an 88 to 94, or for, for many students in Jersey, I know you're on a 4.0 scale, about a 3.4 to 3.8. Um, we were test optional for this past year, and uh, we have not decided on anything for this upcoming year. A few deadlines to be mindful of. We have a November 15th early action deadline, as well as a February 1st regular decision deadline. And then our deposit deadline is May 1st. Costs. So out of state, we're still relatively, um, you know, we're, we're a great value compared to many schools out there. Um, we are a little over 41,000 and change um, for tuition, room and board. And all students are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships when they apply, contingent on your academic work the last three plus years in high school. And additionally, we have significant financial aid as well. So about 80% of our students receive some sort of need-based financial aid, uh, with the average package being over $11,000 last, last year. Um, so like I said, we are taking in-person visits now. I'm going to leave my contact information in the chat box, as well as a link for more information about UAlbany, and we hope to see you on campus soon. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, University of Albany. That was great. We are going to hear from our last campus on the panel today, and that is Monmouth University, whenever you are ready. 
All right, I'll get started now. Hi, everyone. My name is Kelly Young. So I am your admission counselor at Monmouth University. It's so nice to meet you all. Um, we're just going to go ahead and get started. So we're going to cover some facts and figures. We'll go into some of the fun stuff that campus has to offer, and we'll talk about academics too. Um, so to start off, we are a private mid-sized university. We're located right in the heart of West Long Branch, New Jersey. So you're all very familiar with the area, I'm sure. Um, I personally grew up in Jackson, New Jersey, so really close to Howell and Freehold. And pers I've never really heard of Monmouth. I knew about it, but I wasn't really aware of all the amazing things that it has to offer. So I'm so excited to share everything with you guys today. Being a mid-sized university, we are able to maintain an average class, class size about 21 students a class, and we kept all of our classes off at 35 students. There's no lecture halls here. On average, we have 4,500 undergraduate students, and we also offer some graduate programs as well with about 1,500 graduate students. We always like to say at Monmouth University, hawks fly together. We really are a close-knit campus community. If any of you have had cousins, siblings, parents uh, graduate from Monmouth, you know that the alumni um, department is very strong here. We'll talk a little bit more about our location. So we're about an hour away from the city. I mean, all of these amazing schools just talked about all the great rewards that the city has to offer. So it's a really convenient location. We're about an hour and a half from Philly as well. Our campus is extremely historic. There's some really gorgeous buildings. So if you have the chance to come to campus, we're hosting tours Monday through Sunday. We'd absolutely love to see you. I'll put the registration link um, in the chat as well. And then my personal favorite part about campus is that we are only a mile from the beach. We're about a 10 minute walk um, away from the Pier Village area. So there's so much to do. You can live in our university Bluffs, which is our off-campus sponsored housing as a junior or a senior, which is literally on the beach. So your backyard could be um, the ocean waves crashing while you're waking up for your 8 a.m. So it's not too bad. Our local area, we're about a five mile, five miles away from Asbury Park, about six miles away from Red Bank. So some really fun things happening in the local area. About 86% of our first year students do choose to live on campus. So I'm working with students from Freehold, Howell, Colts Neck right now, who even though they grew up in the local area, they want the true four year campus experience, moving away from home and getting a little bit of a sense of independence. So it's definitely possible, but if you are interested in commuting, um, always an option as well. And we have tons of different commuter resources available. Switch over, talk a little bit about the social side of campus. So we have over a hundred different clubs and organizations, um, Greek clubs, cultural clubs, academic clubs, social clubs, you name it, we probably do have it. And right here on the screen is just a snapshot of some of those 100 plus clubs and orgs. Um, just to point out a few, we have our study abroad club, we have a social work society, um, we have a Chinese student association. This guy right here in the middle living his absolute best life is a part of our surf club on campus. So I know we all grew up by the beach, but I never personally had the desire to learn how to surf, but you know, you're a mile away now, it's definitely an advantage you could take um, if you attend Monmouth University. We also have 23 Division I sports teams on campus. Basketball games are so much fun in our Ocean First Bank Center. Our football team plays on campus as well. Um, so everyone showing up to the games and showing out in their mom at the apparel. Switch over and talk about the academic side. So we always like to ask, what do you want your education to do for you? So we believe in transformative learning. So we build experiential education within your curriculum. So no matter what you major in at Monmouth, you're gonna be required to supplement some of your classroom experiences with out of the classroom experiences. So that could be internships, that could be co-ops, that could be uh, research opportunities. Um, for example, our marine and environmental biology policy students are tracking and tagging sharks right off of the coastal waters. Our communication and broadcasting students are interning with ESPN3, filming some of those 23 division one sports teams on campus. Social work students doing field work as early as their sophomore year. So really awesome opportunities to get out there in the field. Here is a list of some of our majors at Monmouth. We have just under 30 different majors with tons of different optional concentrations, accelerated five-year programs if you wanna get your master's. Um, and we also have pre-professional advising as well if you're looking to go into some sort of postgraduate program. 
Our faculty, about 75% of them hold terminal degrees or PhDs in their field. They really are the experts and you get direct access to them as a Monmouth student. Um, and we do have a 12 to one student to faculty ratio. Some awesome internship opportunities. Um, our students are interning at Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan Chase, Z100, the radio station, Clean Ocean Action. Uh, like I said, we really push you out of the classroom to get those hands-on experiences. We also push you out of Jersey for a little bit too. We have tons of different global learning opportunities, um, traditional semester long. We even have community service-based opportunities as well. We do have an honor school at Monmouth, which you could be either automatically considered for when you apply, or um, you, you can fill out a separate application as well. It just kind of makes that mid-sized university even feel smaller than um, it is. And then, like we say, for Hawks, sky is the limit. So that is what I have for you guys today. I mean, real quick, I could go through the application deadlines. Um, we take the Common App. We take a Monmouth University-specific application. However you want to apply to us, we'll take it. We are test optional through the fall of 2023. So if you want to apply without your test scores, we would be more than happy to accept that. And then we have three different notification and application dates. So we have early decision, which is binding. That's a deadline of November 15th. We have early action, which is non-binding, which is the de deadline of December 1st, and then regular decision, um, which is also non-binding, um, and that is a deadline of March 1st. So I'll leave my contact information in the chat, but thank you guys so much for giving me the time to speak with you, and I look forward to hopefully connecting with you all soon. Awesome. What a great way to wrap up these individual uh, presentations for our different campuses here. Fantastic job, Monmouth, and thank you to all of our different campuses here. Now, I think it's a good idea if we take advantage of all of the experts that we have uh, in this group here. So we're going to do a brief q and A. I'm going to share my screen here very quickly. And the first question that I have for you all is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We're going to go ahead and go in the same order that we did. So we'll ask uh, SUNY New Pulse to kick this question off for us. So uh, my advice to someone in the college admissions process uh, would just be to make sure that you're uh, reaching out to the admissions office and your uh, admissions counselors uh, for the school that you're looking to or you're looking to apply for. Um, every uh, school is different. We all have very different uh, admissions process. And so uh, there are different requirements and, and how to apply and, and all of those things. So uh, even if, you know, it's something like fellow SUNY schools um, or out-of-state schools or um, no matter what school you're applying to, definitely reach out to your uh, that admissions office for more details about that application process. Great advice. Thank you. City University of New York, what tips do you have? Okay, so uh, when the pandemic hit, universities across the country moved rapidly to upgrade all the information that they were posting on the website. They revamp many of the websites and, and, and CUNY, uh, we follow, you know, we follow that path. We created a future enrollment guide for students who were, you know, beginning the, the college search and felt, felt at a loss for not being able to visit an admission uh, office or meet with me on the road. So I encourage you to visit the websites of all the schools that you might be interested in attending and really take the time to read all the great information that schools have made available to you, including uh, online tours, virtual tours, and posting of contact for different, not just admissions, financial aid, but also academic uh, departments. You may be able to ask a question to the director of a specific department or the coach at a particular uh, team that you're interested in. So take advantage of that. All the information has been uploaded there and it's available to you until we get back to campus. Absolutely, great advice. Marist College, what advice do you have? Yeah, I normally say, you know, there's so much information that is available to you on the internet. Um, you know, for us, we, dem we consider demonstrated interest. So, you know, attending an event like like this one tonight, or if I come to visit your high school, or if you do one of our virtual information sessions or come to campus, you know, that is all information that we will see in your file when we're reviewing. 
Um, so, you know, just like Abigail mentioned, being in contact with your admission counselor, building a relationship with them, you know, so I tell students all the time, if you come to campus, shoot me an email, ask me for food recommendations. And then the more I see your name in my inbox, um, even though I review thousands of applications, the more I see it, the more I'm going to recognize it when it, that file comes across, um, you know, for for the initial read. So I that's always my piece of advice is to, you know, do your research, use us as a resource um, and continue demonstrating that interest. Awesome, great tips there. Okay, University of Albany, what advice do you have? All right, so I was trying to gather different thoughts in my head so I wouldn't be repetitive of um, what anyone else said, but what I do wanna say that is repetitive um, that Abby and Gina touched on because I, I can't emphasize it can't be emphasized enough is the um, you know reaching out to to the admissions office um, especially if you're a, if, if you think you're academically borderline based on the academic criteria for that school um, you know if we're kind of on the fence in terms of a decision um, demonstrated interest is a huge thing that we look at um, now with that said um, three quick things I'll say one you know I would say if you can um, you use this time now to, to look at as many schools as you can, you know, big and small and, you know, far away and close by. Um, but try to narrow it down to your top, I would say, five schools by the fall. Um, so that's one thing. The second thing, um, if the school offers early action, apply early action. Um, you know, University of Albany, we have early action even if you're a borderline student, we, we're, we're rarely going to deny any students for early action. So um, the very worst case scenario, usually typically we, you know, we would defer a student. So apply early action. And then the third thing, um, I would say any sort of essays, um, whether it be your general admissions essay or I oversee our honors college. Um, so I, I receive a lot of essays for that. Have someone proofread the essays because um, I can't tell you, you know, the one thing that just looks careless um, is, is just grammatical mistakes in an essay. So that's enough from me. Yeah, that was great advice all around. Okay, now it's really hard to do this question last. So we're gonna give you the challenge, uh, Monmouth University. What would you like to add to this great uh, uh, list of advice from everyone? Yeah, I guess I'll take this from a non-admission counselor perspective. And since I am a pretty recent college graduate, what helped me like in the final stages of the college search process was visiting the campus. And I, I'm pretty sure everyone kind of touched upon this, but if you have the availability, go see the campus, walk around, get to get to know where you'd be spending the four years, because that's ultimately how I made decision, my decision of where I wanted to attend. Um, you know, they always talk about that special feeling. I, I think that it's true. I think it exists. Um, so I would say if you can get to campus, show up, um, you know, the demonstrated interest, of course, helps as well. But just for your own personal sake, you know, you want to see if you could fit in where you're touring. Um, so yeah, I would say just, you know, make the effort and come to campus if possible. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to share my screen again. So that first question was advice for people in the college search process. And now we're gonna take an opportunity to learn a little bit more about each of your campuses. So this next question is, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? We're gonna start back at the top of the order with SUNY New Paltz. Uh, so one of our favorite traditions is we do a senior toast. So at the end of your senior year, um, all of our seniors will gather on campus um, and the campus provides a little bit of champagne and we toast to our seniors and all their hard work uh, and all their dedication, all their growth that they've had over the past four years at New Paltz. And that's, as, a, as an alumni, it's one of my favorite things, but uh, I always like to share that too. Yeah, something to look forward to at the end of it all, right? Uh, City University, New York, what's your favorite? No, I, um... Don't quite, to be honest, I don't quite remember tradition at the College of Staten Island, but I do across CUNY, I'm always turned between graduation when we take over the streets of the, uh, of the neighborhood and I, I get to see the families coming out of the subway all dressed up. That's the best day at, at CUNY. And I, whenever I have a new member of our team, I encourage them to take the lunch with me so that we can go to graduation day and hopefully do the rest of the afternoon. Uh, and I always try to do it every year with a newcomer to our team. That sounds awesome. Definitely a sight to see, right? All right, Marist College, what is your favorite event or tradition? 
Uh, so I like to say that this is really kind of like a, I guess, a, a tradition or a goal that students have before they graduate. So while our official mascot is the red foxes, uh, our unofficial mascot are groundhogs, as you can see them all over campus kind of scurrying around. Um, so students love taking pictures with them or trying to get as close as possible to see if they can try to pet one. Um, you know, and, and it's always exciting um, if someone reaches that, but they're so fast that uh, it's not always possible. So <laughs> that would be my favorite. That sounds like a fun challenge. I'm not sure uh, if success is, is it possible? Has anyone ever been able to? to oh yeah, that is yeah. Students, yeah, students have definitely been able to do it. Um, it's always great when they, they record it and share their, their success, but yeah, so that's a fun one. Awesome, thank you. Okay, University of Albany, can you, uh, Beat groundhogs? Um, yeah, I think, well, mine is just a simple one. Um, you know, it's it's the president's address for our incoming freshman students um, on their move-in weekend. Um, and it's just a really neat sight to see. Um, all The president, along with all faculty and, and administration are there to, you know, welcome all 2,700 students and, um, you know, kind of offer their support for them for the next four years. So um, that's mine. I love it. Great. They're all so different. I, it's fantastic. And then Monmouth University, what is your favorite event or tradition? Sure. Um, I'm just going to say homecoming. I love football and I love food. So you really can't go wrong with our big homecoming game. And it's a week long celebration. You can't beat it. Perfect. Well, I want to thank you all again so much for sharing your advice and giving us a, a really good feel about what it's like to be on your campuses, even though we're doing this in a virtual setting for now. I also want to thank everyone who has joined us today, whether you're here live or you're catching the recording, we hope that you found this to be helpful. Just a reminder that this is one of many different events happening. So there are two more sessions yet this evening if you're catching it live. Uh, and then there's another night tomorrow. And then of course this session and all of the others are being recorded. And within about a week, you'll be able to find those recordings at strivescan.com forward slash FR. HSD. I put that link in the chat again for you all. One final note, when you close the window today, you are going to receive a very quick four question survey. Any feedback that you can provide would be very useful as we move forward. All right, everyone, we hope you had a great time. Thanks for joining us and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you.